first question I think a lot of people uh, are curious to know, you were successful fighting for Bama. Why did you decide to change things up and make the move to Montreal? Um, well, my coach at the time back in England, Mark Goddard, he, uh, you know, he put it out there that, you know, he had connections at TriStar Gym and <clears throat> for me to go out there and, uh, you know, I knew, we, we know that the, there was the high, higher level training at uh, TriStar, so, you know, and 170 uh, pound division so deep, so that's the that's the main reason, you know, the higher level training and, uh, you know, being so deep at 170 pounds. Mark Goddard, uh, of course, one of the best officials in mixed martial arts. Uh, how did that uh, relationship, how did that start with you and him? Uh, we're from the same town and, you know, I just, uh, both from the city of Birmingham and uh, I went to the local gym and started to train with Mark, you know, he, he was teaching classes and that's how it started, really. What got you excited? What uh, When you first, can you explain the first time you saw combat sports, mixed martial arts, and what did you, uh, why did you decide that this would be for you? I was always a fan of like martial arts and, uh, you know, boxing, boxing's huge in England and the first ever mixed martial arts I ever saw was a uh, USC Unleashed, it was a uh, Matt Hughes USC Unleashed and straight away, you know, I was just super interested and since the first day I watched it, you know, I, I just... I was become obsessed with mixed martial arts. Uh, many people, I think, if they look back at your career, kind of known as a grappler, but if you look at uh, your last couple of fights, especially the one with Cahal Penrod, uh, turned into quite the quite the striker. Uh, do you like testing yourself in new areas? Do you like embracing, uh, say, the grind of wrestling and implement that into your game, or do you just try to use whatever tricks you're you're taught and try to implement them into into your game in, in real time? Yeah, I'm just trying to be as as dangerous as I can be, you know, be be as well rounded as I can be. You know, I, I I train a lot of boxing, you know. I'm very confident in my boxing skills and also, you know, uh wrestling, jiu jitsu, grappling, so you know, I just try to try to be the most dangerous fighter I can be. Where do you think you've improved over the last number of years or since you uh, made your UFC debut? Where do you feel that you've had the biggest gains? I think my my whole game, you know, I'm you know, I, ba- I balance out my training. Every day I'm doing some sort of grappling uh, or, or boxing training or striking training, you know. So I feel like I've improved my whole game, you know. But um, I, since my last fight, I've definitely made a, a lot of improvements, you know. I've been, I, like, I sparred Lucien Butte for his uh, last fight with James DeGale, you know. I go, I go train at Henzo Grace with John Danahar also, you know, and also the training with Ferraz and Eric O'Keefe at TriStar. So I'm always looking to make big improvements. Uh, what about the philosophical approach? Uh, we've had the, the luxury of being around the guys at TriStar for, for many years, and they certainly have a philosophical approach when it comes to the fight game. Uh, have you jumped on board with that, or is that something foreign to you? No, definitely. You know, like, we're, we're a very technical gym, you know. It's it's not all about, you know, getting fit and, you know, just throwing down. You know, it's uh, we're a very technical gym, and, you know, we, we like to break down our opponents. What are the goals for you when you chart how much you've grown over the last number of years? Still very young in your UFC career, mixed martial arts career in general. Uh, do you kind of map out what your progress is going to be? Where do you want to be in the next year from now, the next two years? You know, I'm just focusing on, you know, keep winning. You know, one day I definitely want to be champion. I, you know, I, I believe I'm going to be champion one day. I believe I'll be the first English champion. So and that's what I'm working towards. But, you know, one step at a time. It's it's a very stacked division, well to wait, you know. So <clears throat> taking my time, winning fights, getting better. I think many people would uh, would feel that this fight with Kita Nakamura very that it suits you very very well. Uh, are you the type of fighter that scouts out some of the strengths of your opponent, or do you leave all that stuff to to your coaches? My coaches will definitely scout that stuff out, and me also. You know, I, I've watched tape on Nakamura. I know he's dangerous. I've I've seen grappling footage of him and MMA footage, so I know he's dangerous, and, you know, I'm, I'm well prepared for this fight. Confidence doesn't seem to be an issue for you. Uh, we're seeing that the mental game is being elevated in mixed martial arts. Is that an area that you work on? Do you try to sharpen your mental abilities ahead of a fight? Oh, yeah, well, I'm always visualizing, you know. Um, I feel, especially with my record and, you know, with the way my fights have gone, I'm, I'm only getting more and more confident each fight, you know, so... I believe I'm getting more dangerous because of that. But, yeah, definitely uh, visualizing uh, plays a big key in uh, my, my mental game. Is it important for you to to keep the undefeated record? We know we've heard many fighters uh, throughout the ages, highly touted prospects, get into mixed martial arts with the idea of keeping an undefeated record intact. And it kind of takes away from 
them growing a, as an athlete. What are your focuses on? Obviously, the goal is to be the best fighter humanly possible, but do you have small goals that you want to achieve throughout uh, this journey? You know, like being undefeated, you know, it's it's definitely, you know, it's, it's a big thing for me. I'm proud, but, you know, my main goal is, is learning. I take every fight, every fight. I'm just, as long as I grow from the fight, that's more important, you know, because as, as, as you say, it's about being the best fighter in the uh, in the long run. So, you know, I'm definitely proud of my undefeated record. And, uh, you know, I'm 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 going to work my hardest to keep that. But as I say, it's just about growing as a fighter. We, we talked to uh, one of your coaches, Eric O'Keefe, uh, the last fight with Pendred. I think one of the things most people were very impressed with is that you had Pendred hurt throughout that fight, that fight, but you never really rushed things. You took your time. Uh, did you just sense that eventually the end would come for him? Yeah, definitely. I knew if I keep hitting the target, he he would fall eventually. And you know, before the fight, I was speaking to Faraz, and you know, we studied his previous fights, fights against like Mike King, where he'd been hurt and he come back. You know, Mike King gassed himself out, and Pendred come back and hurt him. So we knew if we had him hurt, you know, just take our time and and keep chipping away. You know, we're, we're going to finish him eventually. What have been some of the challenges uh, of making the move from from England and trying to adapt to life in cold Montreal? Hi, <laughs> yeah. Um, I think I think the toughest thing was just you know my my friends and family, you know. But other than that, you know, I've 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 made new friends here, you know. So and they're like family. So you know, Montreal's like home as well now. So I love it here. Uh, we, as I mentioned, we were talking uh, to Eric O'Keefe about uh, about your potential. Uh, what it, what does it mean to have a good relationship with your coaches? You talked about Mark Goddard and, and Faraz Sahabi having the chance to train with John Danher. Uh, is it is it important to have a good relationship with the people that are trying to make you better? Oh yeah, it's huge. You know, I mean, I look up to these guys. You know, Eric Eric's like a dad to me. You know, so it's uh, you know, it's it's great to have a great relationship with these guys. You know, I, I completely trust my coaches as well. You know, I have no doubts in what they're telling me. So everything's great. And fighting in your own backyard. Uh... Does that add any nerves to it? Now you're fighting on the big stage. I don't know if you've had to explain to people in the past uh, that what mixed martial arts was, because throughout our journey, uh, talking to many fighters, that's one of the things they've had to explain, whether they were fighting for Cage Warriors or Cage Rage or the WEC. uh, People didn't understand it. It was only when they said, oh, I'm a UFC fighter, that the casual fans understood it. Have you had to explain things to people throughout this journey of what you do? And I'm sure those, uh, those... those explanations stopped once you signed with the UFC. Oh, definitely. Yeah, it's always it's always been a struggle trying to explain to people. You know, they're not really sure. You know, if you tell them you do uh, MMA or mixed martial arts, they're not sure what it is. They think it's like karate or something. You know, so it it was definitely tougher to explain before I was in the UFC. You know, but more people know what the UFC is, and you know, it's growing, especially in England. It's it's still growing a lot. So you know, and this is this is the biggest event ever in England, and there's a lot of English fighters on there. So you know, it's. It's a huge event for me, and uh, I'm uh, I'm very excited to be fighting in England. Uh, the last thing I want to ask you, a couple more things. Are you the type of athlete or the type of individual that you go into the gym, you're, you've been drilling, say, working on your grappling abilities uh, to sharpen those, and then somebody teaches you a new tool in boxing or in Thai boxing. Do you try to master those those skills first, or as soon as you learn something, do you want to implement them into uh, into real-life situation? Yeah, well, that's a big part of my training. You know, I'll I'll learn a technique, I'll drill it, and then I'm very big on situation training. So I'm always put in that one situation where I can repeatedly drill the technique in a live situation. So that's that's the type of training that I like to do. You know, you have to you have to get the live reps reps in of the technique. You know. Last thing I want to ask you: uh, this is clearly a huge fight card. To see two names, uh, two of the biggest names maybe ever in mixed martial arts at the top of the card, Michael Bisping, Anderson Silva. If uh, we're going to put you in the hot seat, can you tell us how you expect this fight to go down? Um, I think <clears throat> I think uh, Anderson Silva is definitely the favorite, but he hasn't looked his his same confident self in you know in his last few fights. You know, coming off the losses, and then you know Nick Diaz, obviously that was a tough fight for him. So. Um, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if he's been caused the upset, but I still believe Anderson's got the tools. You know, I still think he's uh, he's very sharp. Tom, thank you so much for the time, and best of luck to you in England on the 27th. Thanks, John. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it.